Welcome to Solutions with Courtney Anderson. I am your host, Courtney Anderson. Today's show is part of our Law Lovers Lounge series. And of course, our Law Lovers Lounge is dedicated to, is inspired by, those of us who love the legal system, law, the rule of law, and who understand really how beautiful it is. It is. Because when we have laws and we have a society, an organization governed by rules, and we can begin to feel that we are empowered to be heard, that there was a way for us to have influence in the world, that also there is some semblance of equality and justice and fairness. And so this is where we congregate and we share and we really just revel in all of the wonderful glory of loving law. Of course, this is a lounge in our show, and what that really means is that our series is a place for general discussion, a broad um, analysis of different areas. And as a disclaimer, although I am an attorney, I am not your attorney by virtue of taking part in this program. And that has to be always mentioned because there are a lot of rules governing, which makes sense, right? Rules governing lawyers and their requirements and their obligations to clients and things of that nature. So this is a general program where we do discuss legal issues to try to empower, educate, and encourage uh, everyone to talk to uh, um someone in your community, a lawyer, a professional, if you have at at your uh, government agencies or courthouses or locations where there's uh, what they call self-help centers in the U.S., the idea that you can go down and sort of pick up additional information and knowledge, strongly encourage it. And of course, we're so lucky to be alive now. We've got basically one of the most amazing opportunities to have access via the Internet to all sorts of resources, Uh, primary sources, secondary sources, so I encourage you, use these Law Lovers Lounge shows as a a jumping off point, as a starting point for you to learn more, for you to get the specifics of any legal questions or concerns you have in your specific individual life um, in your part of the world. And so here we are today talking about an issue, and the topic, of course, that we're talking about in our episode is, I have been sued by my credit card company? What now? So there are a couple of things in this topic that are, I think, really interesting. And one of the reasons that we we chose uh, this topic here for the show is that this is something, one, that I have a lot of questions uh, that people ask me about, and two, that I have a a pretty substantial amount of experience as an attorney dealing with um, these types of financial, uh, creditor uh, type of legal issues. So here we are. The, the issue is, I've been sued by my credit card company? What now? Let's take it part by part. The first part of the, the, the show topic issue is, I've been sued. Uh-oh. So what do we do when we're sued? First of all, I really need to clarify that you need to confirm that you actually have been sued. One of the things that I've seen over the years, and I've been practicing law since 1998, is that people think they've been sued, or someone would come to my law office. So they would they would come and, and they would you know set an appointment and come down for a consultation in my law office, which um, I still do obviously from time to time. But they they have to be set very far in advance, and they're they're uh, usually my uh, appointments in my law office are done by phone or by a web conference, just due to my my travel schedule. So here we are, and. The question is, I've been sued. The issue is, have you really been sued? And as I said, people would come to my law office over the years, and they would say, I've been sued. And I'd say, oh, my goodness. Well, let's start talking about that. And I said, do you have any, you know, how do you know you've been sued? How do you know that? And then then sometimes they would say, well, I have some paperwork that says I've been sued. And I'd say, great, let me see that paperwork. And I'd look at the paperwork, and it turned out the paperwork actually said they had not they had not been sued. And that that is an important thing to understand the difference between being sued and you have not been sued. So first of all, just to be clear, 
as much as we can in this in this program. How do you know you've been sued? All right, a lawsuit in in general, and specifically in in the U.S. and the jurisdictions that I practice in, a lawsuit is generated when someone goes to the legal office that is in charge of that type of lawsuit. So there's different legal offices. It makes sense that you can you realize, oh goodness, if somebody lives in you know Nebraska, and this is all about you know a credit card that they receive from a bank or a credit union in Nebraska, then it it makes sense most of the time that you're not going to go to court in Florida because there's nothing to do with Florida. There, you know, no, but none of the parties, right? The person in the credit card company um, aren't from Florida. This is just about Nebraska. So part of it is you have to go to the right pl geographic place that handles cases based on the geography of the parties. You also have to understand that different types of legal issues have different types of courts that handle them. You don't have like one court. You don't go to a courthouse and there's like one big court and just hears everything from divorces to murders to credit card lawsuits to um, speeding tickets. That doesn't happen. You got a whole bunch of different courts and the courts are sort of broken down to handle A, you have courts in different parts of the country or world in the U.S. in different parts of the country. So depending on where you live, there's like a local court that that handles issues that pertain to people there locally. That's part of it. The other part is they have different courts within those local courts that handle different types of problems. So there's basically going to be, in the U.S., criminal courts and civil courts. Criminal courts here are issues about criminal law, right? So it's a, it's a case, a crime is something where the society charges you and says that you allegedly have done something against the people. So a criminal case would be you violate a criminal law. You were speeding, you were stealing, um, there was a sexual assault problem, you were driving under the influence, these are crimes. Criminal laws in general, of course, if you violate them, you could have to pay restitution or fees. Restitution is pay money to, to, to sort of um, either pay back your victims or society, and fees are you know, part of the government can impose fees for violating certain criminal laws. But the big deal is with a criminal case, many times the, the consequence, the punishment can, can include up to taking away your ability and your mobility to be free. They can, they can incarcerate you. And that's the big sort of general difference when we think about a crime versus a civil law. So criminal laws in general, um, the higher the, the level of the crime, the higher the level of the punishment. And in general, if you're talking about a year or less in prison in the U.S., you're, that's typically called a misdemeanor. And if you're talking then more than a year in, in, in jail, um, the punishment or higher would be what's called a felony. So there's all these different courts, right? So some courts hear criminal cases, but they only hear misdemeanors. Some courts hear criminal cases, but they only hear really low-level misdemeanors. Like the lowest-level misdemeanors would be things often um, like minor speeding tickets where there's no prison at all or even a risk of it. All it is is, you know, you have to pay a certain amount of money to the government because you were speeding or you ran a stop sign. You know, there's no accident or anything else. You weren't um, driving under the influence, but just these little, little, very low-level crimes. You're not going to go. You don't go to jail, but there are courts that hear very low-level cases that are criminal cases. There are courts that hear kind of higher-level misdemeanor cases where there's a, maybe a potential for someone to go to jail. And then there's different courts that hear the, the felony cases and the more severe case, criminal cases. Um, um, this is very broad. And then on the civil side, civil laws are laws that are violated, and you, there's no issue at all about jail. No one's going to jail, prison, nothing like that. All you do in a civil case is the law is going to try to um, punish you and make you stop doing bad things by either um, taking money away from you. That's the biggest thing the civil system does. But they can also force you to do something. So, um, you know, the, you could go to court and say, oh, my goodness, uh, you know, I signed a contract on my apartment, and um, then I I moved out, <laughs> and I, uh, you know, I didn't pay what I owed in rent, and you, the people can go to court and, and make you pay what you owed in rent, right? They can say, look, this is the contract. They didn't follow the rules to give us notice. They left before they were supposed to. Now they owe us this money that was due on the contract. So you can go to civil court, and they can make you pay money. They can also stop you from doing things, an injunction. What will can stop you from taking certain actions like selling something um, or just engaging in some sort of um, issue that there's a potential civil legal uh, question about. And they can also force you to comply with something called specific performance. They can say, look, this, you signed a contract or you had, an, you, know, you had an enforceable agreement that you would do something, and the parties have now come to court and are saying, look, you know, you're going to have to do this. You're going to have to you know, follow through with the terms of your promise. It's, it's enforceable. So the courts in the civil side, you have to pay money, and sometimes they can stop you from doing something or, or make you do something. That, that, that there's an underlying 
legal issue for, typically like a contract, which brings us to this. How do you know you've been sued? The challenge is that we have all these different courts, and just by describing this, it's to start to sound like to you like that's a lot of courts. It is. That's the whole point. And you have different questions that arise based on what type of issue that you're dealing with. So there's some there's some laws that are that are federal laws, right? A federal law applies everywhere in the whole federal jurisdiction. So the United States would be the whole United States of America. So federal law applies every single place. doesn't matter where you're in Florida or Nebraska. It applies everywhere. And there's entirely different courts that hear just these federal cases, right, in federal courts for federal laws. And there are federal civil laws and there are federal criminal laws. Uh, so there's there's this a whole layer, you know, so there's federal, there's state, there's city courts, there's city laws, uh, county courts, <laughs> that parishes in some parts of the U.S. So just what you can imagine, every little thing that's an entity, right, a city, a county, um, a state, a nation, and then sometimes with between nations, sometimes they're, they're, they're international agreements and international courts of, uh, you know, international criminal courts, um, international courts of justice, so they're, that would apply across different nations, <laughs> right? So for the different laws, you have the different courts that apply in different places that cover different types of laws, and then within all those systems, you have criminal laws, you have civil laws, right? Criminal the punishment at some level could be punished, incarceration, imprisonment, and civil, it's about paying money or making you do what you're contracted to do or promised to do or somebody relied on you to do or make you stop doing something. So you're not ever going to worry about uh, jail or, or prison on a civil law. So part of I think what happens when people think they've been sued and it's a mistake, they really haven't been sued, is they don't understand what it what a what a lawsuit is. A lawsuit is somebody goes to the ideally the right court they're supposed to. So you can imagine based on what we've just talked about, that's part of what you go to that lawyers study in law school. You know, there's a whole usually it's a year long class and it's all about trying to figure out um what, where do you go for a criminal case, a criminal procedure case? And where do you go for a civil case? These are civil procedure, and these are all very lengthy, uh, detailed courses that begin to explain these systems in details because just to know where to go to sue someone is a pretty elaborately complex question, especially if one person in the lawsuit lives or resides in one area and the other person or company is based in another jurisdiction. So if you have one party that is in Florida, another one that's in Nebraska, potentially, depending on the facts, you could go to either court and make your make your case, which makes it even more complicated because each different jurisdiction has different rules, right? Every city court in a city runs their courts differently to a certain degree. And what tends to be, happen is in the United States, they're called local rules. So no lawyer that I'm aware of has memorized every single court and all of the different rules that that individual court has. Remember, the, the cities have courts, the counties have courts, the states have courts, the federal government has courts, or international courts also. And then, of course, with all the different nations, just multiply this. And so people don't memorize all of these. Even a lawyer um, hasn't memorized all the different rules of all the different courts in just one state or even one part of the state because there's so many. What the, what, what the courts tend to do in the U.S. is they literally publish something called local rules. And it's what it sounds like. It's the rules of what you do in that court. Like, where, what office do you go to to file a lawsuit? That question sounds like, oh, that doesn't sound that big of a deal. It's everything, right? So you're a lawyer. Somebody's come to you. They live in a certain place. They're telling you all about their issue. It's a, it sounds to you like it might be a real serious situation, and you're going to need to file a lawsuit. But if you've never been to that city or county or state or federal court, you don't even know where to go to turn the paperwork in to file the case. <laughs> You're not even really sure how much it costs. Because these are government agencies, right, supported by the, the taxpayer, all these different courts have different fees, just like any government processing fee, right? If it's a government service, there's some sort of fee usually. If you're going to get a driver's license renewed, there's a fee. If you're going to go to a court and file um, a lawsuit, there's a fee. But well, how much the fee is is going to depend on the rules, the local rules of that individual court, and sometimes that local judge, right? Because just because it's a city court, there might be 10 different city courtrooms that have 10 different judges, and they all are going to have little different rules. They might have the same filing fee, meaning you might go to the same room in the building to file your paperwork to start a lawsuit, and you might pay the same amount of money, but each individual judge can make all kinds of decisions. What days of the week do they hear their cases? What time do they hear their cases? Um, just They have so much latitude, which makes sense, right? They're the judge. So when you're trying to figure out have you been sued, you need to understand 
what we're talking about. What is a lawsuit? It's basically somebody's going to file paperwork. Now, most of the time, this happens online. In fact, many, many parts of the world require lawyers to file their paperwork online. But since I've been practicing law since 1998, which before we had the Internet technology we have now, and way before we had courthouses and government agencies that had the Internet technology, the lawyer used to have to make the paperwork, literally just you know type it or whatever, print it, and then they would either themselves drive over, you know, ride the bus, bicycle, walk, whatever, to the courthouse. They had to pick the right courthouse and go to the right room in the courthouse, usually the clerk's office is what they're called, and go to the right line and have the right fee and turn the paperwork in. And then that starts the lawsuit. Now you can go online. There's rules about how you get registered for different courts. And it, even though it's online, it's a virtual, the same type of thing. You still have to understand which court and what room, what are the fees, what's the process. So you file your paperwork, whether virtually, online, or in person. Um, and that's what starts to trigger this situation of somebody being sued. That starts a lawsuit. You have to file it with the government. Then once you've been sued, then the government takes that paperwork and sends notice of it to the party that you've sued. When you sue someone, you have to tell them you sued them. So the government is, is going to send notice, but the person who – or they usually do in most situations. Let me just be really clear. The person who files the lawsuit, right? So it could be the lawyer. It could be the person themselves who says something horrible happened to them. They're going to sue somebody. They're also required, in most instances, themselves to send a copy of the lawsuit. So they file the paperwork with the government, which starts the lawsuit going. But they have to also give notice to the person that they've sued. They have to send them a copy of the paperwork they've, that, they, that they've sued them with, which is that paperwork, which is called an original petition usually, if it's a civil case. Um, it's going to tell you what the lawsuit is. What type of lawsuit is this? Is it a credit card lawsuit? Is it a, is it a divorce lawsuit? Is it a child custody lawsuit? Is it a you know failure to pay rent lawsuit? What type of lawsuit is it? They're going to tell you who the person is they're suing. person could be a human person or it could be a corporate person like a business, which could be a corporation or it could be another business entity like an LLC. Then they're going to tell you why they're suing them just in a, just a, a sentence or two. The person didn't pay you know the person breached a the contract, they didn't pay their rent, they didn't pay their credit card payment, whatever. And then they're going to usually tell you an idea of how much they're suing for. Now, sometimes they'll just say it'll be an amount in excess of $1, an amount in excess of $10,000. The reason why the amount matters is because in, in the courts, different courts handle different, high, different levels of monetary disputes. So there's certain rules. In, in, in many parts of the country, if you're suing for more than $10,000, right, if it's $10,001 that you're, that you're suing over, then you cannot go to some of the lower – um, level courts because their maximum they can hear are $10,000 cases. So all of this is, you can tell a little bit detail. So if you're trying to figure out if you've been sued, you have to understand the lawsuit is something that is specific paperwork that literally has been filed already with the court. So when I said people would come to my law office and they'd have paperwork and I looked at the paperwork and I realized they had not been sued by their credit card company, what they were bringing me were letters from the credit card company or the bank. Sometimes they'd bring me a letter from a law firm that said they worked for the credit card company. These were just letters. And the letters would say something like, if you don't pay us X amount of dollars in so many days, we will sue you. But a letter from, a, from, a letter from anybody is not a lawsuit. A letter from anyone itself, with no other paperwork that's been filed with the court, is not a lawsuit. It's just a threat to sue you. A letter from a lawyer without actually having filed the lawsuit. How do you know they filed the lawsuit? Because they're required by all the rules, pretty much, to say, I filed a lawsuit against you. Here's the paperwork I filed against you. Here, and the paperwork is going to tell you what court they filed it in. It'll tell you what date. Every time courts accept paperwork, they, they put a little time stamp on it because there's a whole bunch of rules about from the moment you file a lawsuit, what someone who's been sued needs to do and what their options are at that point. So there are incredibly elaborate rules. If you've been sued, they have to give you the paperwork, and the paperwork is going to show you that they, you were sued where, what court, what city. And if the paperwork is coming from the courts, and in many instances, the, here's what happened. The person, remember, the person that's suing you, them or their representative, right, is going to go either on, you know, in person or they do it online, and they just turn the paperwork in. What paperwork? Paperwork says I'm suing you. Has your name on it, has why they're suing you, has how much they're suing you for in general, so that they can explain it they're in the right court and what they're asking for. 
That's what they do. When they when they do that, then they're also supposed to send a copy of it to the person you know they've sued, saying, "Look, I've sued you. Here's a copy of what I filed at the courthouse, and here's what I'm you know." And it says exactly what they filed at the courthouse, what they're suing you for, where, how much, all that good stuff. In many instances, courts also send the here's what happens. The person has to send you notice that they sued you. They will, in many instances, hire a process server. And the process server is the person who serves, meaning they give you the paperwork from the court showing that you've been sued. There's usually paperwork on top of the the, the paperwork that's the original uh, um, pleading, right? That your that your original petition says, I just you know told you who whose names are on there that's being that are sued, why they're suing you for how much, all that kind of good stuff. When they when they when they file it at the courthouse, now they, it's official. It's already started. You were sued the moment they went to the clerk and turn in the paperwork at the right office and pay the filing fee. Boom, now you've been sued. Now you have to find out. As I said, in some smaller cases, they will also, the person who sued you will also send you just a regular copy that, of what they sued you, showing that they served you with this. In addition, though, they're required in almost every jurisdiction I know of, in the world actually, to give, that I'm aware of, I'm sure there are exceptions, to give you notice officially that you've been sued. So what happens is instead of just trusting the person who sued somebody else to, to say, yeah, I told them they were sued, I sent them paperwork. I sent an email or fax or you know an old-fashioned letter. What, what tends to happen is, no, they, they usually have an independent party that they have that will go out and serve the person, either personally. Um, they can also – literally they'll come to your house or your job and they'll hand you paperwork. It's lawsuit paperwork. You see this sometimes in movies and TV shows. And what the thing, what the purpose of that is, you're, you need, you're trying to have this additional independent proof that you did give the person notice that they were sued. And so when they're served, like I said, often people come to your house or your job and they hand you the paperwork. And then they'll, you know, on a process server, boom, they give you paperwork and then they say, you know, what time it was and who, you know, who you were and that they served you. So they'll, you know, they'll, whatever, they'll come to you at your job or at home and are you Susie Smith? I guess I'm Susie Smith. Thank you. I'm a process server, and they hand you the paperwork. You have been sued. And so then later they could come to court and testify and say, yes, I served Susie Smith. So she knew she was sued. Here's what's happening. The moment you're sued, all these rules start kicking in about now you've been sued, right? So the moment that the paperwork is filed at the right place in the fees in general, even if – technically if it was the wrong place. But let's just, let's just make it simple. The, the paperwork's filed with the government agency, the clerk, right, at the court, boom, you're sued. Now you have to find out, though, that you were sued because there's no magic that happens while somebody's standing at the courthouse or sitting at, you know, online putting their paperwork in with the courthouse uh, website. There's not an automatic way for you to, like, know about this. So the service is, like, incredibly important. That's why I just talked about the person coming to you and serving you. That's why when people came to my law office – and showed me letters, you weren't sued. This was a letter. It wasn't a process server. And when you've been sued, the process server gives you a copy of what was filed at the, at, with the clerk, with the court. But it also usually has a letter on top of it that says in, in bold, you have been sued. It literally says that in bold, capital, underlined, uh, capital letters, underlined. In many, many parts of the world or in, this, in the U.S., it will be in multiple languages like Spanish and English because they keep trying to tell you you've been sued. And it's underlined and it's big font, everything. Because they're telling you, you were sued. Somebody started a lawsuit when they filed the paperwork against you, but now this is proof that, that we're telling you that they filed the paperwork against you. They'll tell you what day that they filed the paperwork against you, and then most importantly, they'll tell you you have the right to file an answer. So when you're looking at the situation of, oh my goodness, have I been sued? Has anyone come and served you? Or did you just open some letter in your mail? Do you see anything on there that's court paperwork? And court paperwork, it'll have like the name of a court on there. It will say you have been sued. It will tell you what court you were sued in. It'll tell you what day you were sued. If you just have a letter where someone's saying, I'm going to sue you if you don't give me my credit card money, that's not a lawsuit. That's a threat for a lawsuit. And that's, that goes for everything else in, in civil cases where somebody telling you they're going to sue you, it does not mean they have sued you. It just means that they might do it. They're just warning you. And they're giving you a chance usually to go ahead and resolve it so they don't have to go down and file paperwork against you. All right. So that's the most important part of step one of the episode. I have been sued by my credit card company. What now? 
I want to clarify this is a two-part episode because obviously we're going to need to be able to explore in more detail once we get past this first question of have I even been sued? What does it mean if a credit card company has sued you and what are your options to address the case? So again, have you actually been sued? Do you have a letter or do you just have a threat? Some people actually come and they'll talk to a lawyer and they don't even have a letter. All they say is, well, someone called me on my phone and said that they worked you know, for the credit card company and they were mad about the money that I owed and I have to give them money or they'll sue me tomorrow or they'll sue me tomorrow night or whatever. None of that is worth anything. It's a phone call. It's not a lawsuit. It's a threat. It, it's the same thing. Now, there's a whole bunch of very important issues we will <laughs> discuss in part two of the show about your rights. Um, with people who you owe money to or that you might not even owe money to but they might mistakenly think it's you in terms of what they can do in terms of calling you and threatening you and and the way that they speak to you and communicate with you and all of that. But as we we move here in part one toward the end of this uh, episode, I want to clarify. Have you actually been sued? You have to have been served with notice that you were sued. One of the things that has been fascinatingly interesting to me in this area is for many, many years, I mean many years, one of the things I would do is I would serve as what's called local counsel. So my law firm, other law firms from out of the area, okay, so if I'm in one city, there would be a law firm from a different city they would come and hire my law firm and say, look, we have a lawsuit against somebody in your local court. So remember I talked about all the different things about, you know, there's different courts for different cities and counties and states and nations and um, federal government and international courts. Okay. And I kept saying how there's so many different courts. And then there's the criminal courts and there's different levels of criminal courts for the little cases, criminal cases where you don't go to jail, like just pay a fine, or big criminal cases where you might face life in prison or in some rare, uh, very few nations, even, you know, death by the government. In the civil side, here you are with all these different types of cases that are civil. Again, low-level dollar amounts go to the lowest-level court because they tend to be less complicated. And so the courts will have a maximum, as I shared earlier. Some courts will say, look, we cannot, by law or by local statute, we're not allowed to hear cases more over $10,000. So it could be a credit card case, but it's not going to be in a in a small claims court or a court with a with the jurisdiction of a small dollar amount. Because if you have a credit card bill at two hundred thousand dollars, you're going to be in the different court because of the amount of money. Also, different types of courts hear different types of civil cases. So so there are going to be some case courts that hear civil cases, but they'll only hear like family law cases. Typically, they'll be called family court. And what do they hear? Things related to family law issues, so divorce, child custody, things of that nature. In some places. There'll be a court that's a civil court, and it will hear family law, like divorces, child custody, and it will hear credit card cases in the same court. Depends on the local government setup and and what the local uh, powers that be have decided. So you're gonna you're gonna just there's so much the lawyer has to do. As you're looking through the first part of this, have I actually been sued? You need to understand the difference between an actual lawsuit where someone has served you notice and the situation where you think that someone might sue you or they told you they might sue you. As I said, one of the things that was interesting is I was hired as local counsel. That means my little law firm was in, you know, city A. Somebody from a different city in a different part of the world would hire me and say, look, we have a lawsuit in your, one of your local courts, but we're not gonna, we don't want to send one of our lawyers from wherever they are. You know, I get a plane ticket and a hotel and a rental car and pay for food and everything for them to go to court down there because, you know, either the case isn't that, that complicated or it's, you know, it's it's more difficult. So can we hire you to go to court to appear for our law firm even though just just for these cases? So they hire you case by case. And I said, yes. And a lot of the things I heard were credit card cases. And the most fascinating thing to me would be I'd show up in court, right? So, so a, a, a different law firm somewhere else represents um, a company that gave you a credit card, okay? That credit card went to their law firm and said, hey, the person didn't pay. You need to sue them. So that law firm did. They went ahead and filed paperwork, which the moment they filed the paperwork in the right court or in a court, I'll just say in court, it, it, that's what starts a lawsuit. Now you've been sued. So I would show up for court, right? It's like 9 a.m. on a Tuesday for the case. And here I am. You know, we're in court ready to hear this case. Weirdly enough, a person, the person whose name was on there, so let's say it's, 
it's, you know, Steve Smith. Steve Smith's name is, you know, so it's a credit card company versus Steve Smith. They've sued him, and now we're in court to hear the case in front of a judge. Steve Smith would be in court, right? The judge would call the, the name or the clerks would call the names of the case, and Steve Smith would stand up, yes, Your Honor, I'm here. Okay. And then Steve Smith would say, when the case was brought before the judge, Steve Smith would say, I never, ever, ever was served. I got no notice of this lawsuit. I am shocked that there's a lawsuit. And every time, and I must have heard people say that, I don't even know, hundreds of times? It was just interesting. Here's the weird thing. So I would ask them, so how did you know to be at this courthouse on just Tuesday at 9, 9 a.m.? Do you just come here every Tuesday? Do you come here Monday through Friday, just every single day at 9 o'clock? I mean, if you had no clue that this credit card company sued you, right, which is what they're, when they say they didn't get served, that's what they're saying. They're saying nobody ever gave them paperwork. Nobody ever told them there was a credit card case. But how are they there? How do they know to be in court? So as we conclude part one of our two-part episode, I have been sued by my credit card company? What now? I, ple- I encourage you to, to join us for part two. I also enjoy, uh, encourage you to always come to uh, my general website, which is CourtneyAnderson.com, and, of course, my law firm website for general information or about my law firm to contact us is LitigationMitigation.com. Thank you again.